everyone's steps for the years ahead shall be ordered by the Lord in the course of this prayer and fasting. <laughs> no one operates by trial, by error anymore. <laughs> God's plan for your life will be unveiled step by step. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lift up your two hands to heaven. And thank God for the privilege to be alive and well at this time. Thank God for the privilege to be in his presence again. Ask him for a word from him this morning. That we once again set you on your feet and keep you going in the center of his plan for the year. I need and desire an encounter with you this morning, Jesus. Grant me on check at access to an encounter with your word this morning. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. It's done. Amen. You are going home with a tangible treasure Amen. from this service today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord and more than a conqueror. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and be seated. God's plan for our lives is in his book. That's our series of teachings for our Sunday services this month. God's plan for our lives is in his book. What he says to one, he says to all, every one of us. God's plan for our lives is hidden in his world. We serve a God of plan and purpose. Say, my cancer shall stand. That's what he said. And I will perform all my good pleasure. So God has a cancer for his children. And they are hidden in his world. The Lord of hosts said, by myself I sworn, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And I have purpose, so shall it stand. Isaiah 14, 24. So we serve a God of plan and purpose. For everything, that's a plan. A, a purpose for everything on the earth. To everything, there's a season. And a time to every purpose on the heavens. We serve a God of plan and purpose. Uh, this awesome encounter in 1977 from Jeremiah 29 verse 11, Revised Standard Version. He said, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for welfare and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. A regular version here, I know the thought that I think towards you. But that was the one I read. God has a plan for me. His plan must be far better than mine, for his ways are higher than our ways, and his thoughts than our thoughts. And that in his plans lies our future, not in our plans. He said to me that day, your future is in my plan, not in your plan. It's the task of locating that plan that makes people follow their own plan. 
the demand of identifying that plan and the legal working in it is why many are following their own plans. But the gap between someone following God's plan and the one following his own plan is as far as heaven and earth. The difference is clear and will always be clear because he's on the highway of life. His ways are the highways of life. My ways are higher than your ways. His ways are the highways of life. And all through this month, as you have read in the prophetic focus, we shall be exploring his plans and how to take delivery of them, the demands for making those plans a reality in our lives. And it shall be an awesome time in God's presence. I once had an encounter with God and I said, God, show me the secret of kingdom prosperity. And I had them respond in a three-day prayer and fasting. I wasn't praying for prosperity. I asked him to show me the way. Show me the secret. Show me how it becomes a reality. He said, my prosperity plan, so it's a plan. It's not a promise. It does not answer to prayer. It's not a promise. It has no respect for fasting. My prosperity plan is a covenant. Until your part is played, I'm not committed. What covenant? The covenant of seed, time, and harvest. How reliable can change the covenant, my covenant of the day and of the night, you can't alter it. So you say, why the art remaining covenant? God has a plan. The plans are hidden in his world. And what is withholding anyone from saying God's plan this morning, as you partake of the communion, your eyes will be opened. Yeah. As you partake of this communion, your eyes will be opened. Yeah. As you partake of this communion, your eyes will be opened. Yeah. Remember, he gave them bread. He broke the bread and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him. Whatever is blocking anyone's eyes from seeing God's plan from his word for his life shall be torn away this morning. Yeah. That's Jesus using communion to open the eyes of people. Everyone's eyes shall be opened this morning in the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now we would like to examine some of these plans in this service and how to see them become a reality in our lives. For example, one, we are redeemed to have eternal life. That is, to share the God kind of life with him. But what does it take to make this a reality? Capital requirement is repentance. Repentance. With fruits to show. Bringing forth fruits worthy of repentance. It cannot be appropriated. Each one gains access as individuals. It's not transferable for parents to children. Everyone steps in by himself or herself. The spiritual strength of the parents is not a plus. It has no effect on it. We enter into that one by one. So parents will be careful. And be sure that our children are not appropriating our faith to be equal to their salvation. 
You don't see the fruit. Quickly take note and address it. You call your son or daughter and say, what for? The thing is not there. The thing is not there. Every true child of God honors the father. It's not there. Not only the father, everyone around them enjoys honor from them. Don't you know I'm an undergraduate? And so, you are the one paying your fees? No. It's not there. Don't say they are children nowadays. No, it's not born again. Luke 3 8, bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. No appropriation, no, my God. Repent. They can't repent for you. Yes, sir. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Men are praying, what shall we do? Repent. How do I sustain eternal life? Keep feeding on the wall. Then the divine nature in you begins to increase. Second Peter 1 4. Keep feeding on the wall. The word is the food of the spirit. You don't feed your reborn spirit, it will die. The exercise that keeps your spirit man strong is prayer. Engage actively on the prayer altar. These are our responsibilities. Otherwise, once saved is not always saved. You can wander away into another forest. God forbid. God forbid. Our um, so many hunters went to some nooks around some places here. And one of the robbery gang members said, listen to me. I was an active member of this church. I do not. Bishop should never know that I'm here. I'm broke down. He was once an active member in the body of Christ and now an active member of a gangster. Don't toy with your salvation. It can be turned to a trash. Don't toy with your salvation. Don't let the devil turn into a trash. There could be some individuals today, I don't know them, who are once active for the Lord in truth and in deed and are now members of secret courts. They just went back to their vomit and became a dog again. Nemotis cano preni anuta shego prekita nubria. Therefore, let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. It's a serious matter, sir. All these modern day salvation I put toy around with everything. Uh, thank God. Uh, I just came back from, um, I actually have not been in church for about seven Sundays. Uh, it's been so busy for me. But you have been eating all those days. I used to fast. I mean, uh, I think we started prayer and fast together before the ministry started. Well done. Where are you now? Where are you now? Your position has changed. Has it changed more than mine? We were there together. We were all at the same level. You quit. He quit. Where your obedience stops, there your future stagnates. Please, feed your spirit man on the wall. Exercise your spirit man on the altar of prayer. Jesus prayed and sweat came out of his body like as drops of blood. He's an exercise platform. I'm glad you are quiet because you need it. 
You need this thing. Many know they are no longer in touch. They are only in church. They are no longer in touch. They are only in church. To show their social identification. No one knows a man like the man. Don't ever toy again with your salvation. It can be gruesomely costly. Grievously costly. Thank you, Jesus. The gate to heaven is a narrow and straight gate. Not all commerce gate. And few there be that find it. But wide is the gate that leads to hell. And many there be that walk in it. Not know what they are walking into. No one shall miss his place in heaven. <laughs> Number two, we are redeemed to walk in dominion. Raised up together with Christ in heavenly places. Made to sit together with him. Ephesians 2, verse 6. Far above. Open the and powers. And dominion. And everything that's named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. We are redeemed to walk in dominion. But what does it take to walk in dominion? Three things. Enhanced world level. For in the world lies the authority of the saints. <coughs> you say to this go, it goes. To that come, it comes. And it's what inside you that can say out. Psalm 45 and verse 1. Ride on prosperity and majesty because of truth and righteousness and meekness. And the right hand shall teach the deep things. The deeper our insight, the higher our level of authority. My God. The deeper our insight in the world, the higher our level of authority. Number two, it takes faith to walk in dominion. Through faith, they subdue kingdoms. They are righteousness, my God. So it takes a commitment to build in your faith to keep walking in dominion. What does it take to walk in dominion? Power. For through the greatness of their power shall the enemies submit themselves to you. Psalm 66 and verse 3. It takes power. And power has answers to desperation for growth in the school of power. Desperation. They had power in Acts chapter 2. They had great power in chapter 4. With great power do the apostles of Jesus Christ. Thou shall receive power in the Holy Ghost. So they receive power in Acts chapter 2, and they receive great power in chapter 4. Power is not power, power is in levels. We had a clean picture of that in Ezekiel 47 and um, verse 1 to 5. You know, we call it rivers of living water. He took me through the waters. And they were to the ankle, one level, ankle level. That is pre-ankle level, just like you have pre-teen, and then teen church, and then youth church. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. New birth is welcome to the bank of the river. <laughs> New birth is welcome to the bank. Your leg is not there near at all. When you're baptized in the Holy Ghost now, now a registered person at the bank to now start in the school of power. Then, 100 level, uncle level, uncle deep. One semester does not mean uncle deep. That is near uncle deep. Second semester, successfully, now uncle deep. And then 200 level, knee deep. 300 level, waist deep. It's on and on and on and on. 
But to think you are now a professor when you are in primary three is a problem. A real problem. They say, oh, say what's your name? I'm prof. <laughs> hey, my God. Which university? Kingdom Heritage. <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom Heritage. No, see, I'm primary school. Ah, are you the headmaster? No, no, no. I'm a pupil. But a professor. In the last drama we did, I acted a professor. So can you call me something else? That's mere entertainment. Please know that we are on a journey in the school of power. Somebody else will say, in Jesus' name, three times before the demons answer. They say, in Jesus' name, they fled. I say, in Jesus' name, they get tormented. Somebody will say it seven times, they are not moving. It's not in that level yet. When an armed robber knocked on your door, say, who is that? The lion is inside. And they say, who is that? Open the door. <laughs> it takes growing in power to walk in dominion. It takes a thirst and a crave to assess growth in power. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and flows upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon you and your offsprings. Isaiah 44 verse 3. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee to see thy power. As I saw it in the sanctuary. Give me another experience. Psalm 63 and verse 3. Now, what I'm saying here is this. We are just registered students in the school of power. All of us. Maybe I've left the uncle deep. I hope so. Maybe I've come near the knee deep. I hope so. But I'm not sure I'm near the waist deep. And yet, Jesus said, the words that I do, shall you do also? And greater words than this, shall you do? To keep working in dominion, we must keep growing in power and grace. We are going to see wonders this year. Yeah. People are in need mostly because they don't know what they need. Our God rules by his power. Power forever. He ruled by his power forever. Psalm 66 and verse 7. Number three. We are redeemed to reign as kings on the earth. Every child of God is a seed of Abraham. And kings of people shall come out of his loins. Genesis 17, 5 to 7. And Genesis 17, 15 to 17. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but Abraham shall thy name be. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Now, and I will make thee exceeding great, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs of the covenant. If you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Kings shall come out of thee. And we are out of him by redemption. So we are redeemed as kings to reign. Now go to verse 15 of it. Genesis. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name again Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. Now, for I will bless her and give thee a son also of her, 
Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations, and kings of people shall come out of her. Praise God. <laughs> and we are partakers of the blessings of Isaac. Galatians 4, 28. It said, Now, we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. So, Isaac was a nation. He reigned over his empire. Established kingdoms went to him for a treaty. Please don't overrun us, for thou art mightier than we. What is in it that empowers believers to reign? Come and say wisdom. Say it loud, wisdom. wisdom. The loudest you can wisdom. wisdom. Joseph took over Egypt by wisdom. Daniel took over Babylon by wisdom. That validates Proverbs 3, I mean Proverbs 8 and verse 15, by wisdom kings reign and princes decree justice. How do we assess the wisdom of God? Demand for it. The wisest man in Bible history before he walked away was Solomon. It was released on him on demand. Give me wisdom. He said, I have given thee wisdom. Give me wisdom. I have given thee wisdom. And he became wiser than all men, including intellectuals, men and women in industry, wiser than all men, all men, wiser than scientists, wiser than all men, and all the kings of the earth came. To land at the feet of Solomon. That was released on demand. Nemoni Tane Prodish Egalatosa. Why? God, the only wise, reigns forever and forever. It takes wisdom to be enthroned. Now, brought it down to practical level. What is wisdom? Whoever hears these things from men and do them, he's a wise man. You may think he's a dummy, he's a wise man, he's on his way to the throne. You may think he's crazy, he's a wise man, he's on his way to the throne. Praise God. Hallelujah. I mean, so you don't need to go far and near and be looking for laboratory to test whether you have the wisdom of God or not. You hear my word, you do them according to the rules. You're a wise man. You may be like a captive today in the prison, on your way to the, to the throne. Two, on issues that come our way, Lord, where's the way out? Show me the way out. So you have inspired wisdom. Lord, why is it you're not growing? Show me the way. And he released it. And we chose to walk in it. From March 1984 to forever. This church will never hold anywhere in the world without somebody new coming in per day. Nothing enthrones like wisdom. Practical wisdom, walk in the light of the world. You're on your way up to the throne. Enjoy walking in it. Don't say it doesn't matter. Let me hit you with one. And they twain shall be one flesh. Husband in Jamaica, wife in Nigeria. That is a broken home in the making, being made by the two of them. It's not the Bible. Have you ever met a half human being on the street? And this is uh, fifty percent Mr. Susu person. If you meet a man that has only as <laughs> Dissected, half nose, half mouth. Won't you run? <laughs> now, they think is Old Testament. 
I see a wave of divorce hitting the body of Christ. I've said it before. Because this new way that is leading to a doom, people are running to it. Believers are now victims. God's word can't direct them anymore. You know why God does not speak to people? What he said to everybody to do, you are not doing. Why will he call you for private discussion? It's not right. If you like, get angry. It's not right. I got an international job. You are going to have an international break, broken marriage. Broken, sir. You left your children on, attended to. I say, God, God led me. It's not God. He never leaves people outside his world. Some have to repent today. Today. Today, my friend. No pastor in this church is permitted to go alone to any station. We've dropped some after we have prayed for them. They are going on foreign mission. We drop him. There's no day that your wife will join you. We don't do that. You go together. When you cough in the night and there's nobody and your toe dries up, you fall on the ground. Exposing one another to danger. Don't divert my attention. Let me face where I'm going. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Now, somebody is not saved. It's God who led you to him to marry him. What, what kind of human being? You know it's not saved. I said, the Lord led you. Led you? The devil led you. The devil, he came down personally and took your hand. I said, get into trouble now. He will be saved. Let him be saved now. Are you the one who will save him? Can you make somebody repent by force? He said, it's not good to be drinking. Was I not drinking when you met me? I will slap you. It's my natural habit. I can't separate from it. Won't you go to church? Was I going to church when you met me? Church nonsense. <laughs> Trouble began. Is it not better to be, not to be married than to get under fire all your life? I never found a wife or a husband for any of our children. Is he born again? Where he came from is here in the month. Does he have a spiritual background? That's it. We are at peace. God will give you greater peace. Amen. So all this social, social Christianity won't work. You are either spiritual or carnal, you can't be neutral. You are either spiritual or carnal, you can't be neutral. Don't let you marry a non-believer. Why did it lead you to go and marry a leper? Thank you, Jesus. You will reign. Yeah. Where others are ruined, you will reign. Yeah. Number four. We are redeemed to be a blessing and not a burden. God sent Christ to bless us. Galatians 3, 26. He sent Christ to redeem us from the cause and bring us under the Abrahamic order of blessings that follows a man to the day of his death and leave a generational mark on his children behind him. Generation behind him. Abrahamic order of blessings that keeps your lineage on a Part of blessings that cannot be denied. There are many people here, no one in your lineage, in your generations after you, your children, your children's children will be mistaken for a pauper. Yeah. No one shall be dubbed a beggar. Yeah. What is the way to this generational order of blessings? Blessed is the man, Psalm 112 and verse 3, that fears the Lord, that delights himself greatly in his commandments. 
His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. So it's on the sea. And the generation after him shall be blessed. His generation after him shall be blessed. Now, among other things, wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness, his righteous lineage, endure it for him. The lies of obedience better than sacrifice. 100 days of prayer and fasting won't substitute obedience. Will not. There are things that belong to soul winners. No matter how hard you try, if you're not a soul winner, you can't partake of it. God is not a respecter of persons. He that winner souls is wise, the wise shall inherit glory. Amen. So it facilitates your glorious destiny to become a reality. These are real. You hearken to my voice. All the verses will follow you. Come on, you are overtaking the 28 and verse 1 to 3. All these blessings. So, obedience of faith, tireless obedience of faith is what facilitates access to our redemptive blessings in Christ. Remember the sevenfold package? The last listed here is I'm blessings. Blessed in your going out, blessed in your coming in. My God. Blessed fruit of your vineyard. Blessed store that never knows lack. They are all yours via clean, clear, willing, excited, delights of obedience. It works. We were in a hurry to build. Um, a place for ourselves in Garden of Faith when we acquired the place. So we had the rectangular structure, steel frames put on. And I said, God, why is fun not coming for this? He said, that's not my plan. My God. He asked me what's plan for ordinary things like that. I said, what's your plan? He said, place this um, concept on letter D representing dominion of the gospel in the north. So I asked them to put out all those things. And then found wah, wah, wah. instead of getting angry that they put down the things they have been building. You know the story. How many suicide bombers have gotten near our church and could not function? Never dominion. Bah. Obedient. Whoa. Some church going on in my degree in Yobe, everywhere. Come near, you die for nothing. Dominion. Dominion. Obedience. Sir, we were building a place in Kaduna. And then when we had quick notes on where we were using, the normal thing was to go there and tidy up the place. To start from the basement. He said, if this ministry, if this church ever moves to that side, that will be the end of this ministry. We banged it, sir. Obedience. Obedience. And then from that miserable corner of the town, he brought us to the main city. 13 acres for free. I mean, for free in the sense that there was nobody who knew it before. Obedience is sweet. Obedience is what? Don't have no other church in town as pastor. This one church. The whole world becomes your parish. We can't tell for now until after service to know how many nations are hooked onto this service. One church? Are you crazy? No, I'm not. That's what he directed. You won't miss God. Amen. Learn to say yes, sir. That's what my mentor said. Copeland. Yes, sir. Whatever I say is right. You are liable to error. I'm liable to error. God is error free. 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 Obedience is great. 
Subscribe to it. Lift up your right hand. Give God thanks. To obey is better than sacrifice to hearken at the fat of rams. Give him thanks. Give him glory. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Maritosi credi anosalo embla karadino eshiangarado pate kenetua. Thank you, Father. Take all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Yes. Give the Lord a big hand of praise for his word. <laughs> Very quickly this morning, you are here in this service. You know that you know because no one knows you like yourself. You know that you know that the story of new birth, all things becoming new, you have not experienced it. Maybe you are riding on the wings of your parents or guardians. Quality walk with God. I'd like to pray with you this morning. You want to be saved through the art of repentance and faith in God's forgiveness. Wherever you are in this sanctuary, please rise and stand to your feet. And I will pray for you right there where you are. And Jesus, the Savior, will save your soul will deliver you from the pressures of life, give you eternal life as a gift, and make you heaven worthy. You are there, please stand. Stand to your feet. Jesus, save my soul. Forgive my sins. Stand to your feet. God bless you, and God bless you. Now, there are also people here this morning that need to rededicate their lives to Christ. I've wandered far away from Lord. Lord, I'm coming home. You want to come back home to your heavenly father this morning. You know the thing is not there. You want to say, Jesus, I'm rededicating my life to you. I want to start afresh. Wherever you are, stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory. Now, everyone standing both for the first and the second call. Please be on your feet for prayers. Be on your feet for prayers. And lift up your right hand to heaven. Stop filling those forms for now. And pray this prayer of faith after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today repenting of all my sins. Jesus, forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven and I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith by your grace. I will serve you all through the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. No force from hell shall draw you back from following Christ. You will follow through to the end. You make heaven at the end of your journey. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations. Please complete those forms and pass them over to the church officials around with you. And we believe God for your sustainability in the faith and your finishing strong in your followership of Christ. In the name of Jesus. As announced earlier, we have posted on our website Believer's Foundation class lessons. Try to engage and equip yourself with a brand new beginning in the journey of life. You don't have access? Please contact any of our area offices in the place where you are and you'll be given copies, hard copies or printed out copies. Jesus is Lord. Give the Lord one more time a big hand of praise.